3D printers have been around since the early 1980s, but in the last 10 years or so, they have become more widely used and accepted. It seems like every day we see more and more things manufactured and created by 3D printers, and because of their increasing popularity, 3D printers are now easier and cheaper to purchase than ever before. What started out as a way for manufacturers to develop cheap prototypes has turned into a huge niche market for hobbyists, where virtually anything can be created. When you take a look at all the things that are possible to create with 3D printing, it's hard not to think to yourself, what could I do with one? So, should you do it? Should you get a 3D printer? Well, to answer that question, we should dive into a few other things first. Number one, are you willing to learn? So many people get a 3D printer because they see all the really cool stuff that they can make, but once they actually get it, it just sits in the box or on a shelf somewhere. If you are looking to make prototypes or create mechanical parts for practical use cases, then 3D printers are a great choice. There are a bunch of different filaments with unique characteristics that are great for practical applications. If your sole purpose for wanting a printer is because you want to make cool stuff and have fun doing it, then that's a valid reason too. But you have to remember, just like every new hobby, there is a slight learning curve. You have to be willing to learn how to download files and orient them in a slicing program such as Cura or IdeaMaker. Fortunately, these programs are free and intuitive and it doesn't take long to get the hang of them. You'll also have to learn how to level your print bed and set up your slicer settings based on the type of filament you use. Now, this can all seem very overwhelming at first, but if you take it step by step, you'll have the hang of it in no time. There is this big misconception around 3D printers that you have to have the knowledge to know how to model and design 3D objects. Well, you don't. There are a plethora of websites out there, such as Thingiverse, with thousands of pre-made files that you can download for free. Number two, are you willing to put in the time? If you are looking to just press a button and get back a perfectly printed part, well, you're going to be sadly disappointed. Like I've said, it takes time to find files and orient them in positions to optimize printing time. Not to mention the time it takes to actually print the part itself. It also takes time to remove supports and post-process the prints depending on how refined you want them to look. Although this can take a while, it is incredibly easy considering the amount of information and tutorials that can be found on the internet. You aren't going to get an instant reward with 3D printing, but I can promise you that it is well worth the wait. Number three, do you have the funds? A lot of people talk about how expensive it is to purchase and maintain a 3D printer. Although it can be expensive, the 3D printers and filament today are cheaper than they've ever been before. You don't need a $1,000 or industrial size printer to get started. Arguably, one of the best small 3D printers out there is the Creality Ender 3, which only costs about $190. If you watch for sales on Amazon or Creality's website, you can actually even get it even cheaper. Cheaper printers might not have all the features of the more expensive printers, such as heated beds or self-leveling abilities, but most of the cheaper printers can eventually be upgraded as you grow in experience and want to add more things. Filament can be expensive depending on what type you get. I personally use PLA for pretty much all my builds. The PLA I use is from GTEC and it costs only about $20 for a 1kg roll. These rolls can last quite a while depending on how often and how much you print. Other materials such as carbon fiber or wood can run a higher price tag, but for beginners, PLA is recommended because it is the cheapest and easiest filament to use. Now, what if you can't afford to spend $200 on a 3D printer but would still like to try your hand at it? I recommend going on Facebook Marketplace and asking around to see if someone would be willing to print files for you for a small fee. Or, even better, if you have a friend or someone you know with a printer, ask if you can take a look at it and try printing a few files. If you still want a printer after that, then start saving a little money every month until you reach your goal. Okay. So let's summarize. 
If you are looking to get a printer for a hobby or practical use, I'd recommend getting one. 3D printing is really fun and useful. Plus, if you get good at it, you can actually make some money by printing parts for other people. If you are still unsure about investing the money in a printer, try and find someone who has one and is willing to let you try it. Once you've given it a try, you can then better decide if it's still something that you want to consider investing in. The only situation where I'd say don't invest your money in a printer is if you aren't willing to put in the time and effort needed to put your printer together, configure your settings, and learn a slicing program. Otherwise, the sky's the limit with 3D printers, and you probably won't regret getting one. I hope this video was helpful, and thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more content. Thank you.